Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about the evidence we have for the death of Jesus, and this time, is there more to people than just their physical bodies? Now, of course, in order to answer this question, it helps to know what physical means. What are physical bodies? Again, there are multiple definitions of physical, but the two most relevant in the dictionary at Merriam-Webster are of or relating to natural science, definition 1a, and having material existence, perceptible, especially through the senses and subject to the laws of nature, definition 2a. So for our purposes, I think that touches on all the important points, something that can be perceived, which is subject to natural laws and is related to natural science. This understanding encompasses every part of the human body, fingers, toes, hair, chest, etc. It even encompasses bones and eternal organs. We can't perceive them normally, but only because they're skin covering them. They're visible during an operation, or through x-rays. Individual cells of the body are also perceptible. We just need to use certain tools, like microscopes, to see them with our eyes. This is no different from using a mirror to perceive our face. All of these different parts of the human body are all physical, because they're all perceptible under certain conditions, and they respond to the laws of nature, having material existence. In order to show that the physical body isn't all there is to a person, therefore, there needs to be some part or aspect of the human person which isn't bodily and doesn't respond to natural laws. There are at least ten major aspects of our experiences as humans which aren't reducible to physical phenomena, and here's what they are. First is memory. When we remember something that happened to us in the past, it's not physically present to us anymore, but we can remember it, in some cases vividly. So the physical explanations of memory aren't adequate to explain our ability to perceive something that, physically, isn't there anymore. Now, some people suggest that memory is just a series of electrical signals being interpreted by our brains. However, even so, the interpretation itself and the image that we perceive in our minds aren't physically present to us, therefore human memory is not entirely physical. The second is like memory, imagination. Just because I can imagine a mountain of platinum doesn't mean that such a thing really exists. Therefore, imagination doesn't obey the same natural laws as physical reality at all, so imagination isn't entirely physical. Third is the nature of my thoughts about other things. It's not really possible for any physical thing to be about any other physical things. Oranges aren't about orange trees, nor are they about being peeled and eaten. But thoughts, intentions, and express statements can all be about physical things, and even things that aren't physical. So thoughts don't obey the same laws as physical reality. Therefore, our thoughts aren't entirely physical. Fourth, recognition of types. If I have three spoons in front of me, all different sizes and all made of different materials, each is a completely different physical object. There's no connection physically between my three spoons. However, I can still clearly tell that all three are spoons. I recognize that they all belong to a single type, based on something non-physical, in this case, their function. The same example can be given using chairs, beds, homes, and countless other things that are even more different from each other than spoons, while still being part of the same type. Type isn't a physical connection between objects. Therefore, my ability to recognize a type isn't entirely physical. Fifth, like the nature of my thoughts, the meaning of statements made by me isn't a physical quality. If I write you a letter and you study the words, you won't find any physical thing in the paper or the ink called meaning. Yet it's obvious that what I wrote has some meaning, because you can understand my letter. So the meaning of statements isn't entirely physical. Sixth, like meaning is truth content. If I write a statement on a piece of paper, how true or false that statement is, is not a physical property of the paper or the ink. So the truth content of statements isn't entirely physical. Seventh, plans. If I make a plan to go to the grocery store tomorrow, I can definitely follow through with that plan, so the plan must exist. However, my plan isn't a physical thing, not even if I write it down. 
so plans aren't entirely physical. Eighth are my choices and options. If I walk downtown, I can either wait for the lights to let me cross the street, or I can jump into traffic. These are possible choices which I can make at any time I cross the street, so they must exist. However, there is no physical object called choice to cross the street safely. I can't even imagine what something like that would be like. So choices aren't entirely physical. Ninth is morality. If I steal someone's phone, that action is definitely morally worse than holding the door for them. However, the morality of my action isn't physical in nature at all. I'll never find a speck of moral depravity, no matter how closely I examine a mugger with a microscope. So morality isn't entirely physical. Finally, there's one of our most essential qualities, our identity. I know who I am. When I look in the mirror, the person looking back at me is definitely myself. However, there's nothing physical about my identity. There's no portion of my body that's devoted to selfness. In fact, personal identity behaves entirely differently from all the rest of physical reality as a whole. No animal and no machine is able to identify itself as itself. So identity isn't entirely physical. So on the whole, there are lots of things about the human person and the human condition that don't behave the way you'd expect them to if they were entirely physical. Therefore, there's every reason to think that there's more to people than just their physical bodies. Next, does God will everything or only good things? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.